questions 21 through 25 of the 2000 grade 7 Goss math contest. In a basketball shooting competition, each competitor shoots 10 balls, which are numbered from 1 to 10. The number of points earned for each successful shot is equal to the number on the ball. If a competitor misses exactly two shots, which one of the following scores is not possible? So you have 10 basketballs and each of them is numbered 1 through 10. And when you shoot these balls, you get a score that's equal to the number on the ball. So they're saying that you are missing exactly two shots. Which one of the scores is not possible? All right, let's say you get them all in. You will get a total of 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 10 as a score, which is equal to 55. Now let's say you missed this one and this one. That would mean you would have 55 minus 1 point minus 2 points which is 52 points. So this is possible. That is a score that you can get. We have to find out which score is not possible. So you can just kind of keep experimenting. But one thing I notice is that if you miss the balls that have a 9 and a 10, your score will be 55 minus 9 points minus 10 points, which is 36 points. So that's another score that is possible. But you cannot have a score less than 36 if you're missing only two shots. 36 is the lowest. So all of these perhaps I'm sure you can get, but 35 is not possible because the lowest score you can get under the conditions of the question is 36. So 21, the answer is E. Sam is walking in a straight line toward a lamppost which is 8 meters high. When he is 12 meters away from the lamppost, his shadow is 4 meters in length. When he is 8 meters from the lamppost, what is the length of his shadow? So let's draw a diagram here. So he is walking toward a lamppost and the lamppost is 8 meters high. So this will label 8. And when he is 12 meters away, so we'll say from here to here is 12, his shadow is 4. So when he is here, the shadow that's cast by the lamppost is going to be 4. So this distance, is sh his shadow, is 4. All right? So now what they want you to figure out is when he's only 8 meters from the lamppost, so approximately when he is here, it's the same person, so it's the same height, what is his shadow? So they basically want you to figure out what would be his shadow like that. So this distance right here. All right, so let's work with this. Now I just want to draw a straight line to indicate that he is always going to be the same height. This line that I drew, this uh, from there to there, is him. So he's represented by a line, unfortunately, for him. So we'll call him having H as a height, all right? And then this 4, of course, we were already given in the question. And this is what we want to figure out. So from there to there, we'll call that S, all right? So now we have similar triangles here. And those similar triangles are this triangle right here and the big one all the way around that one those are similar so that means that h this guy right here over four is the same as this height which is eight 
over the total distance from there to there. And that total distance is 16. Because from here to here is 12, and from here to here is 4. So that gives you 16h is equal to 32, and therefore h is equal to 2. So he is a pretty tall guy. He's 2 meters in height. Now we turn our attention to these two triangles. This one right here, and this one right here. Those ones will also be similar. So therefore H over S is equal to eight over this whole distance. And that whole distance is what? Well, he is standing eight meters from the lamppost. And then this part is S. So it's eight plus S, like that. H, we already figured out, was two. So substitute that and get two over S is equal to eight over eight plus S. And now we can solve. So we've got cross multiply 16 plus two S is equal to 8s, and that means 16 is equal to 6s, and therefore s is equal to 16 over 6, which reduces to 8 over 3. 8 over 3 meters is the length of the shadow when he is right here, 8 meters from the lamppost. And 8 over 3 looks like it is choice D two and two-thirds. The total area of a set of squares arranged from smallest to largest is 35 kilometers squared. The smallest square has an area side length of 500 meters. The next larger square has a side length of 1,000. In the same way, each successive square has its side length increased by 500 meters. What is the total number of squares? All right, so they've got these squares here that just keep getting larger and larger. So we've got like that. And eventually, you'll have a whole bunch of them. And I don't know how many there are, but they want us to figure out that number. But they've given us some important clues. They've told us that this one is 500 meters in terms of its side length. I'm going to change everything to kilometers since the area they gave in is in kilometers. So 500 meters is 0 0.5. Uh, the next one is 1,000 meters, which is 1 kilometer. The next one is increased by 500 meters, so its side length will be 1.5. Similarly, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and so on. And then they've said, that when you add up the areas of a bunch of these, the total area is 35 kilometers. So this means that this square, which has an area of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, that's how you obviously figure out the area of a square, plus this one, plus this one, right? Plus this one, and so on. Eventually, it'll be equal to 35. But I don't know. So what I'll do is I'll write them all out so far and let's see how far we need to go in order to get a sum of 35. So 0 0.5 squared is a quarter, then 1 squared is 1, 1 1.5 squared is um, equal to 3 over 2 squared, so 9 over 4 plus 4 plus 5 over 2 squared is 25 over 4, and so on. 3 squared is 9, and then this looks like 49 over 4. And let's just finish this out. The next one is 16, right? All right, so let's do the sum. Let's add up the first few and see what we get. If you have a quarter, 0 0.25 plus 1, you have 1.25. 1 
So this is our running total here. If you add 9 over 4, that becomes 3.5. All right, so we're still a ways from 35 here. We have to figure out how far we have to go before we reach 35. All right, we add 4, and we're up to 7.5. Okay, we've got to keep going here. Plus 25 over 4, which is 6.25. Now we're up to 13.75. Add 9, that brings us up to 22.75. Add 49 over 4, which is 12.25. Uh, and we hit exactly 35. So we don't need to worry about the 16 here. Just these squares total 35. So how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it was basically these seven squares that when you add up the area, it equals 35 kilometers squared. So 7 is the answer to number 23, which is C. 12 points are marked on a rectangular grid as shown. How many squares can be formed by joining four of these points? All right, so let's see here. We got one here, two, three, four, five. So when I draw it that way, I get five. So, so far, I still have a long way to go before I reach any of these. So now let's figure out a way of drawing the squares in another way so I can get more than five. How about if I use these, like diagonally, like that, and similarly, like that. This would give me another four, correct? And is there any more? So, so far I'm up to nine, so I can eliminate choice A, I can eliminate choice B. So, so far I'm up to nine. All right, can I get any more? Well, maybe. Let's see how many more I can get. Uh, how about if I used these ones right here? That would give me another square, and this would give me another square like that. And I think those are two new ones, so that's another two. And I think that is it. So that gives me 11 total. So the answer is D. But one thing I wanted to point out in this question is that the question doesn't give us concrete uh, directions. It doesn't say that the squares must have the dots as their vertices. It just says how many squares can be formed by joining four of these points. Because watch what happens. I'll do this again. When I created these squares, right? I'm sure you remember this one, right? This scenario where I had created four. You can see that I create four squares. But notice in the middle, I've also got these ones, these little guys. These are squares. But those squares, I guess they're not counting because those squares don't have the black dots as their vertices. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like those black dots must be the vertices of the square. Because if you add those four, our number becomes 15, and 15 is not one of the answer choices. So. Obviously, 24, the answer is D. A square floor is tiled as partially shown with a large number of regular hexagonal tiles. The tiles are colored blue or white. Each blue tile is surrounded by six white tiles, and each white tile is surrounded by three white and three blue tiles. Ignoring part tiles, the ratio of the number of blue tiles to the number of white tiles is closest to. 
So I'm assuming in this question, blue is represented by the shaded one. So this is the blue one. And you can clearly see that the each blue tile is surrounded by six white tiles. So this is the blue one. Around it are six white tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then they also tell you that each white tile is surrounded by three white and three blue. So for example, this is a white tile. It's surrounded by three white, one, two, three. And it's surrounded by three blue, one, two, three. So they're saying they don't give us any dimensions of the square floor. They just tell us it's a square. But I guess if you have a pretty decent sized square and you have this kind of pattern, how many blue will you have and how many white will you have? And then they want you to figure out the ratio. So here is a square floor that is tiled in the same way as our diagram up here, but this one is blank. And what we want to do is fill it in and that will hopefully give us an understanding of the ratio between the number of blue tiles to the number of white tiles. So let's fill in one such blue tile. Let's choose that one. Is it surrounded by six white tiles? And currently it is because everything's white. But let's keep going here. How about the next one over? It will also be surrounded by six white. But now I want to color in one below like that. And the reason is this will allow me to see if the white tile is surrounded by three white and three blue. So if this is the white tile that I'm looking at, is it surrounded by three blue? It looks like it is. And is it surrounded by three white? And it looks like it is. So this type of a pattern will fit our conditions of the question. And if you keep circling or shading in blue to meet the requirements as we have, we should get a pretty good understanding of the ratio between white and blue. So after completing the uh, coloring, let's count how many we have. So this row looks like six blue, five, six, five, six, and five. So this looks like 11 times three, 33 blue. And then how about the white tiles? How many are those? I'll uh, label them down here. This row looks like six, six, and they look like pretty much six in every single column here. So how many columns do we have in our diagram? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So 11 times 6, 66 white. So this is an approximate ratio between the blue and the white based on our diagram. And it should hold true for any square floor, regardless of the dimension. And this gives us, if you reduce it, 1 over 2. And therefore, the answer to number 25 is E.